Without efficient communications, the Royal Air Force could not continue to operate. It could no longer continue as a cohesive, efficient fighting service. It would be impossible to control aircraft, and, just as bad, sections and bases would quickly lose their vital interdependence. Without telephonists, teleprinter operators and telegraphists, the RAF would certainly have a problem. Your service career begins with six weeks basic training at Swinderby in Lincolnshire, and then you move on to Cosford to train in one of these three telecommunication trades. If you want to become a telephonist working within the communications team, you will need just three weeks training. If you wish to become a teleprinter operator within the RAF's international service, you will be brought up to the necessary standards of accuracy and speed within 10 weeks, thanks to the use of the very latest teaching aids. Or in 26 weeks, you can qualify as an RAF telegraphist, and that means the best there is. As well as teleprinter operation, you learn how to work a Morse radio transmitter key, a vital emergency standby. And this is a typical communication center, or COMSEN, as it's usually called, through which every RAF station receives and sends its signals, all handled by telegraphists and teleprinter operators. But much the best way to demonstrate to you what the communications network is about is to show it to you in action. This is Nepal, a relatively poor country set in the inaccessible Himalayan foothills. Exceptionally hostile weather has ruined the crops and there is extreme danger of famine. Only a large-scale airdrop can get the vital food supplies in fast enough. The British government is most keen to help. Whitehall immediately contacts 38 Group at Benson, a force specialising in emergency action the world over. Sergeant Wood. I'd like to send an immediate signal to Headquarters 46 Group. I want to know the expected arrival time of the aircraft for Nepal. Moments later, the urgent signal arrives at the Benson Comsen. The teleprinter operator allocates a serial number, checks the time of receipt, hands over a confirmation copy. Now the message is retyped on a special machine that transfers the wording to code on a perforated tape, and the retyped message confirms its accuracy. Next, the operator dials for a landline to the destination station, and when contact is successfully made, the coded signal can be fed into the teleprinter. Seconds later, the signal is being typed out automatically by the receiving machine at group headquarters. At Benson, meanwhile, the mobile communications team kits out for the very different climatic conditions of Nepal. Thanks largely to fast communications, personnel, equipment and aircraft are quickly at the ready and the life-saving operation underway. As she enters East Mediterranean airspace, the aircraft is picked up by the RAF flight watch base at Episcopi in Cyprus. Telegraphists make voice contact with the incoming aircraft and pass on important information regarding local weather conditions and so forth. The runway in use, Secretary 29, the right hand. All aids for the service, sir. Your parking space, Secretary Bravo West 5. Over. 4271, all copied and maintaining so call watch. 4271, Roger, listening out this frequency. Over. Global communications have recently been improved still further with the Skynet communication system. Operating through a satellite, suspended in space, 19,800 nautical miles above the Earth's surface, beaming messages along the flight watch route via specially designed stations. 4,000 miles later, the Hercules touches down safely at Barawa airfield in the shadow of the Himalayas. Hours later, the vital communication center is set up and operational. Now, thanks to the skill of this small communications team, the massive airdrop can get underway with precision and safety, and famine is averted. All aircraft are kept in constant contact with ground control, and the team even succeeds in establishing a direct radio link with 38 Group headquarters back in the United Kingdom. 
Oh, Roger, you're going to stop it at the end. It has been estimated that this operation alone, codenamed Kana Cascade, saved two million lives. This could be you, doing vital and interesting work, thousands of miles from home. Or you could be a telephonist, teleprinter operator, or telegraphist, doing equally important work, maintaining the interbase communications without which the Royal Air Force could not exist.